Hello, my name is Joachim Suter. I'm the founder of the Academy of Lymphatic Studies. And today I would like to talk to you about how lymphedema, once it uh, is present, progresses through different stages, what changes typically happen to the tissues during that progression, and why it is important to treat lymphedema as soon as possible in order to avoid this progression and to reverse any tissue changes with appropriate treatment. Lymphedema, regardless of etiology, meaning regardless if it is a primary or secondary lymphedema, usually progresses through a series of stages, especially in those cases in which treatment is not initiated early enough or if the swelling is not treated properly. The further lymphedema progresses, the more challenging it becomes to treat this condition effectively. That is why it is so important to get help and seek treatment right away if you are experiencing any symptoms of lymphedema, such as numbness, tingling, or swelling in the affected area, even if your initial symptoms don't seem like a big deal to you or they come and go. Now, while there is currently no cure for lymphedema, early diagnosis and treatment improves both the prognosis and the condition itself. If you do not act on early symptoms, the buildup of lymph can cause permanent damage to the tissues under the skin. As you know, lymphedema is a swelling of a body part, most often the extremities, and can be caused by either a developmental abnormality of the lymphatic system, in which case it would be labeled as primal lymphedema, or by a mechanical disruption or obstruction of normally functioning lymph vessels or lymph nodes, secondary to surgery or trauma. If lymphedema is caused by surgery or trauma, it is classified as secondary lymphedema. Secondary cases may occur immediately following the surgical procedure or trauma, within a few months, a couple years, or even 20 years or more after surgery or trauma. In primary cases, lymphedema can develop any time during the course of a lifetime. In some patients, the onset of lymphedema is gradual, in others uh, it may be sudden, and as the accumulation of protein-rich fluid progresses, the affected areas may develop hardening in the tissues and frequent infections. Although the swelling may recede somewhat during the night in some early stage cases, lymphedema is a chronic condition and will gradually progress through uh, its stages if left untreated or poorly treated. However, there is no specific period of time for a patient to remain in a particular stage. For example, a patient will not necessarily be in stage one for four months and then progress uh, to stage two for six months before moving to stage three. So what are the stages of lymphedema? There are three stages, uh, actually four stages, if you count stage zero or the so-called pre-stage. The staging system for lymphedema applies only to lymphedema affecting the extremities and is based on details uh, about the amount of swelling and the condition of the skin and tissues in each stage. Stage zero is also known as the latency stage, the subclinical stage, or the pre-stage of lymphedema. In this stage, stage zero, lymphedema is not yet clinically present. However, the transport capacity of the lymphatic system, meaning the maximum amount of lymph fluid transported by the lymphatic system in a unit of time, is subnormal, yet remains sufficient to manage the normal amount of lymphatic fluid. Patients who have undergone a surgery or had trauma involving the lymphatic system and do not experience the onset of lymphedema directly following surgery or trauma are said to be in a latency stage or in a hidden stage of lymphedema. For example, those women who uh, have had surgery for breast cancer with or without lymph node uh, dissection and radiation and do not present with post-mastectomy or post-lumpectomy lymphedema are considered to be in a latency stage. Again, in these cases, the transport capacity of the lymphatic system is subnormal due to the surgical procedure, but still sufficient 
to train the normal amount of uh, lymph fluid. The same is true if the transport capacity of the lymphatic system is reduced by uh, congenital malformations or dysplasias of the lymphatic system, which is, in the, which is the case in uh, primary lymphedema. As long as the subnormal transport capacity of the, uh, of the lymphatic system can manage the lymphatic fluid, lymphedema is not clinically present and the lymphedema is in a pre-stage. In both cases, the reduction in the transport capacity of the lymphatic system results in a, a fragile balance between uh, the amount of, uh, the lymphatic system is able to transport and the actual amount of lymph uh, lymphatic fluid, which means that patients uh, in a pre-stage are always at risk of developing lymphedema. Now, the onset of lymphedema depends on the ability of the lymphatic system to compensate for any added stress to the system. Meaning, if the uh, amount of lymph fluid is increased due to a certain condition, such as an injury, um, restrictive clothing or an infection, for example. If the lymphatic system is not able any longer to compensate, lymphedema will develop. Now, it is important to point out here that sufficient patient information and education, especially following surgical procedures, can dramatically reduce the risk of developing lymphedema. As you know, there are certain precautions for those uh, individuals at risk for lymphedema, uh, carrying heavy objects, um, restrictive clothing, uh, air travel are uh, good examples. So knowing how to avoid the onset of lymphedema in the first place is crucial. Once lymphedema develops, it starts with stage one. This stage, also known as the reversible stage, is characterized by soft tissue pliability without any fibrotic changes. Typical for this stage is that pitting is easily induced and the swelling retains the indentation for some time. Pitting is uh, generally more pronounced in the early stages of lymphedema and occurs if pressure is applied with the examiner's thumb or uh, another finger, but usually the thumb, on the swollen tissues. Pitting is usually tested on the distal, meaning uh, the lower end of the extremity, uh, preferably over bony prominences such as the wrist or the back of the hand or the back of the foot and occurs as a result to the displacement of fluid in the tissues caused by the pressure with the flat uh, thumb. The pitting response, meaning the uh, indentation produced by the pressure, can remain on the tested area for some time if there are minimal fibrotic skin changes present. So pitting is certainly a sign for early stage 1 lymphedema and it is possible for the swelling to recede with elevation of the extremity or overnight. With proper management in this early stage, it is possible for the patient to uh, expect reduction of the extremity to a normal size compared with the uninvolved limb. Without proper care, however, progression into stage 2 in the vast majority, case, uh, vast majority of the cases is uh, inevitable. Stage 2 is also known as spontaneously irreversible lymphedema. This stage is primarily, uh, primarily identified by tissue proliferation, meaning um, an increased amount of tissue and subsequent hardening of these tissues, which is known as lymphostatic fibrosis. Over time, the tissue becomes harder, more indurated, and pitting is more and more difficult to induce. In stage 2, the so-called stemocyne is positive. Now, a stemocyne or positive stemocyne uh, um, is present if the skin of the dorsum, meaning the back uh, of the fingers and toes, cannot be lifted or lifted only with difficulties uh, compared with the uninvolved uh, side or extremity. A positive stemocyne is considered accurate to diagnose lymphedema of the extremities. However, 
the absence of a stemocyne, a so-called false negative stemocyne, does not exclude the presence of lymphedema. In many cases, the swelling increases over time, which further uh, exacerbates the already compromised local immune defense. As many, as, uh, as many of uh, you know or may know, if there is prolonged swelling, the local immune defense in the affected area is impaired and the local defense cells are not able to appropriately, uh, to appropriately react to pathogens. Because of this, infections or cellulitis attacks at this stage are common. Volume reduction can be expected if proper treatment is initiated in this stage of lymphedema. However, in most cases, the hardened tissue will not completely recede in the intensive phase uh, of complete decongestive therapy, or CDT, which is, as you know, the gold standard for the treatment of lymphedema. Reduction of fibrotic tissues in this stage is achieved mainly in the second phase of CDT with compression and good patient compliance. So good patient compliance means wearing your compression sleeve or stocking, uh, performing self-MLD and exercises um, the way your therapist taught you. Lymphedema often stabilizes in stage two. However, especially with those patients suffering from recurrent infections, the lymphedema may develop into stage 3, which is labeled as lymphostatic elephantiasis. Typical for stage 3 is a further increase in volume of the swelling and further progression of the tissue changes. Lymphostatic fibrosis, meaning uh, the hardened tissue in lymphedema, further increases in firmness and other skin alterations such as papillomas, cysts and fistulas, or infections uh, of the nails and skin, as well as alterations, uh, develop frequently. Pitting may or may not be present in stage 3. The natural skin folds, especially on the back uh, of the wrist and ankle, deepen, and the stemocyte becomes more prominent. If lymphedema management with complete decongestive therapy or CDT uh, and other possible adjunct treatment modality starts in this stage, reduction can still be expected, but it may be necessary to extend the duration of the treatment in order to achieve good results. However, even extreme cases of uh, lymphostatic elephantiasis can be reduced to a normal or near normal size with proper care and patient compliance. So, for more information on the stages of lymphedema or complete decongestive therapy and lymphedema management, you may go to Lymphedema Blog, which is a website dedicated to provide free and relevant information to those patients affected by lymphedema, lipedema, uh, and other forms of swelling. Just log uh, on to www.lymphedemablog.com and click on any article link that may be of interest to you on the index um, at the left side of the website.